for the Learn Zern webinar. Um, Got to tell you, um, about two weeks ago, I never dreamt that I would be sitting at my home giving a webinar to 80 people. Um, so our times have definitely changed in the last two weeks, and um, I appreciate you guys joining us. Um, we're going to go through um, Learn or Zern today, and we're going to be stopping throughout to take questions, um, and um, we'll just proceed from there. So thank you. Um, I noticed everybody, I don't hear any background noise, but just make sure that you've got your video and microphone turned off. Um, I know we've got little kids and dogs and everything in the background, and I can imagine if 80 of us turned on our microphones, what it would sound like. So again, welcome. And just for me, if you're not familiar with who I am, I'm Melissa Bray, one of the math instructional coaches. I'm going to be presenting today. And then April Neal and Kaylee Coulter, the other two um, math instructional coaches are going to be moderating. So I almost think they have a harder job because um, they're going to be watching the chat room and trying to pick up all of your questions and they lean into um, to help me answer some of the questions that you guys may have. Um, another thing, um, if you, I see some of you have found the chat already. Um, so on that number three, that's where you would click onto the chat. And if you need to leave the meeting, um, do the red phone instead of the X on the screen. Otherwise, if you exit out, you're still in the meeting. And then Kaylee and April have been posting this um, link. Um, it's our attendance. Since we can't do sign-in sheets, um, we can um, have you guys go in here and then they have drop down menus, so look for the webinar that says Learn Zern, and then the presenters, Melissa, April, and Kaylee. Um, I'm going to go off of this screen, um, but Kaylee and April will keep posting it. And then at the end of our session, um, I'll have this webinar up again, um, link so that you can make sure that you take your attendance. So our agenda for today, um, we're going to take you through, um, if you're not familiar with Zern, Zern, a little background, um, it really mirrors our Engage New York curriculum, but we're going to talk through, I know there's some Swan School um, teachers that are on here, and you can also use it, and I'll show you how you can um, look at the curriculum and pick out what you might want to use for your students. And um, same at the end, I'll show some of the SWAN materials we have on the website or on Schoology that Engage New York teachers can also use. So we're going to first go through what the Zern dashboard looks like. I'm going to go through how to set up your class and your students, how you can assign um, assignments to your students, and how you can check in with your students and see the reports and see how they're doing. And then at the very end, I'll go up into some of the reports or some of the resources we have in that district distance learning resource folder um, in Schoology. So here is the dashboard. When you first log on to Zern, you're going to have to create a username and a um, password if you haven't done that yet. And then once you're into Zern, you'll see this dashboard come up. Um, it might look a little different. Um, Last night I went in and they had changed what this screen looked like. So I was quickly changing my PowerPoint to make sure it looks the same as what it looks like today. Um, but all the features are still the same. So I wanted to go over um, number one. This is that Zern overview video that April sent a link to you um, in the emails that she sent. If you're not familiar with Zern, it's just a nice overview of what um, Zern looks like and what the curriculum looks like. Number two, if you want to see what your student's going to see, it has a sample um, student feed so you can go on. Um, what's nice about Zern is the students have to go in order of what you assigned to them. So um, they can't go on to the next activity until they have finished the activity um, that was assigned to them first. If you ever want to come back to this dashboard, if you've gone to another website, um, just click on the word Zern and it'll take you back to this dashboard. 
If you want to see what the curriculum looks like, you would click on um, this curriculum tab and I'll take you in there later um, after we've looked at how to set up your class. You also have reports um, and I'll talk about the there's five different reports that you can get um, and we'll talk about those different ones. Roster is where you're going to set up your class and your students. Um, and add your students. So we'll take you into there too and see what it looks like. Zern is constantly um, updating and giving new stuff. Um, so keep an eye on here. Sometimes they might add something to their website that might be useful for you. And then finally, you have a weekly schedule that Zern or suggests, not recommends, um, some of it might be different because some of it they're recommending you in the classroom to pull a small group, um, which we're not in a classroom. Um, our times have changed a little bit, but it might give you some ideas on um, how to set up um, the Zern. Okay. So I don't know if we have um, any questions. Or I think what I might do is let me go through setting up your class and students and then we can um, talk about the um, any questions that you might have on that. So to create a class, you go to the roster button. So everything that deals with your class and your students is always going to be found on the roster button. So go to roster and if you have not added a class, the screen is going to come up first. And it's really simple. You click add class. What will happen then is another screen will pop up and it's going to ask you to name your class. And so think of what you want to name it. Um, this is what the students are going to see. So make it something you could make it fun. Um, I know <laughs> we're needing a little fun now, so um, you could be creative in what you um, call your class name. You're also going to pick your grade level and then you click create class. And that's pretty easy. That's all you do to create a class. The next screen will pop up automatically, especially the first time you're setting up a class and it's going to ask you now to add students. So you click on add students. And if you notice you have a class code, this is the code the students are going to have to um, enter in the first time that they join. But we're going to talk about that in a little bit this class code pops up in a lot of different places, so you don't have to necessarily write it down um, from this screen. Once you click that button, um, add students from the previous page, it's going to take you to this page. Here's your class code again. And then here is where you're going to add your students and it says you can um, type them or paste them in. It's one student per line needs to be first and then last name. Um, I found it's easier just to type in everything than to go try to find a file that has all of my students' names. Um, it's, by the time I would have done that, I could have had everything typed in. It does allow you to have up to 35 students. So what I would do is also add myself as a student. Um, or you can make up a name, um, but it will be your student account. So if you want to see exactly what your students are seeing, um, you have the opportunity um, to do that. And so after you've typed in all the names, you go to next. And this will pop up. And so this has all of your students and it comes, um, Zern comes up with their own um, usernames and passwords for the students. But here's where you can change change them. So if your students already have usernames and passwords that they use to log on to their computers, um, you can go ahead and change it right here to what they have. Um, it might be easier if they're already familiar with how to log on to their computers. Um, I think the usernames, some schools use their um, student ID number. Um, if you're a kindergarten class, I might make it easy and make all the passwords the word cat or the word go. Something easy that the students can type in, um, but they would need their own username. One thing about the username, if that username has been used throughout the US world or whoever's using Zern, 
um, it will tell you that it's not um, a username that you can use. So you might have to add, like you see there, you might have to add a one or a two or something after their um, username. And after you do that, then you click the next and all your students are added. So now we're gonna take time, because um, I know you may have some questions in, um, regarding adding students and adding classes. Um, so now's the time, um, Kaylee and April, if you see anything, I don't know if you wanna pop in. Yeah, so somebody was asking it, where they access um, Zern and um, they're going externally to zern.com, correct? Yes, good, good question. Um, yeah, you just go onto the website just discern dot I can't remember um do you have a screen open is it zern.org or zern.com we can find out you can Lisa, definitely it is zern.org okay thank you I couldn't remember so zern.org All right, and um, Denise Brownlee is asking, um, she was wondering if they could find the problem of why a num one of their um, ID numbers was already taken. She said it just happened with a few of her students, and she's wondering how the ID numbers would already be in use. Somewhere in the world, somebody was in Zern. Um, it could also be possibly maybe that student, a previous grade level, maybe the teacher used a Zern with that student. Um, so you'd have to probably create something new for that student. Okay, and then Kimberly Smith was wondering if she should use TK or use PK instead of um, TK or if she should use K. She's wondering. Good question. Um, kindergarten looks a little different on Zern. I'm going to go through that. And TK definitely can use the kindergarten part. Um, there are little activities and it goes from zero to five, five to 10, um, 10 to 15 and 15 to 20 with the numbers. So TK can definitely use um, maybe the smaller numbers to work on. All right, and then Amy was, um, I think we're gonna come up to this later. She's wondering, um, you're gonna show us how to connect Zern into Schoology, correct? Right, and what it is, um, actually your students would just log on. You're going to communicate with them through um, Schoology and maybe give them their passwords. There are some worksheets you can assign to them, but the students are going to just go straight to zern.org and go on, um, log on through that way. So there's no really connecting Zern to Schoology other than we have some of the worksheets in Schoology that you can assign. Okay, and then um, um, Ingrid, was asking um she has an lh class and she's wondering how she can differentiate for her students um and i'll show you um the next section i'll show you how you can assign different curriculum or different grade levels different um, things for your students good there's a lot of stuff going on in the chat so if i missed your question repost it and then at the next stop we'll we'll hit it again but i think we're ready to go on melissa okay. Okay, thank you. Okay, so the next section is um, selecting your student assignments. So you have your class set up and you have your students entered. Now we need to assign them what they're going to do. So when you're selecting the assignments, this is just a continuation of setting up your class, setting up your students. Um, so that last page where we set up our student names, once you press enter, it's gonna come to this screen. Um, for the first time. So if you notice, it has where you can select your grade level. In Zern, it talks about missions. Missions are the same thing as modules in Engage New York. So they're titled the same. Um, also, the topics are the same as Engage New York. Um, so I think it might have been a copyright thing. I don't know why they used mission instead of module. Um, but it is the same exact thing. So what you would do is on the drop down menu, you'd pick your grade, pick your mission, and then pick the topic that you want to be on. And I will, um, when I'm done with the section, I'm going to go out of this PowerPoint and go live onto Zern, and I'll show you what the curriculum looks like um, if you have questions on that. 
if you're a SWAN school, when I go into that curriculum, you can see the different topics and you can pick maybe topics that you haven't taught yet or that you want to review, um, even though you're not in an Engage New York um, site. So then you would click finish. And it takes you to another screen and it says congratulations because um, you finally have set up your class. And if you notice, you're going to have this class code again. Um, and what I would do for you, um, you can get the login cards for all of your students so that you don't have to go back to that one screen and write them all down. Um, if you pick on get login cards, um, it'll pull up a um, a document that has all of these little cards on them um, for you so that you can see um, the usernames and passwords for your students. And then you'll have to get this out to your students um, for signing up. So that's why if it's if you are able to keep their same username and password that they've um, used, that would be great. And then you click done. And it comes to this page. So this page, um, uh, let me talk, I'm sorry, this is a page, um, it doesn't come to that, you're done once you've um, done that last screen. So when you do done, you're done on number five. This would be for um, special ed classes and that LH class, or if you needed to differentiate, um, or if you have different grade levels within one class, you would click on roster again. And when you click on roster after you have set up your class, this is what you're going to see. And you then go and check a student um, that you want to differentiate or to change. So if you don't want Madeline on grade three, module five, lesson 20, you click on her name and then up here you see change lesson. So change lesson, you can change what she's going to do. Um, you also notice um, it says remove students. So if you have a student drop, you can also add students um, up above there. But when you change lesson, this screen will pop up that looks very familiar to the one that we just looked at. And here for Madeline, you can change the grade level, you can change the module, you can change the topic. So you can really set, um, differentiate um, for your students, especially, and I'm talking more of like the special ed classes, um, resource kids, um, and so on, that um, you may have more than one grade level in your class. And then you click set, and then she's set. So before I take questions, I want to take you, I'm going to take you out of this PowerPoint, so bear with me. I'm going to, your screen will probably disappear um, with the PowerPoint, and then I'm going to try to get the website up. So let's see. Oops, and I just hit the wrong one, so bear with me. <laughs> okay, here we go. So hopefully it's loading. Um, April and Kaylee, can you let me know if it loaded? Yeah, we're seeing your Zern uh, okay. login page right now. Okay, good. So you come to zern.org and you're gonna come in with this um, sign-in sheet. And what I did not, or what you can see up here is there's a little key here. So when you put in your username and your password before you click sign in click on the little key here and it will say man well mine says manage passwords but the first time you do it it'll say do you want me to remember your password and put okay and that way every time this pops up you don't have to retype in all of the username and password all you have to do is sign in so it'll save you some time so here's CERN um, and here's the dashboard. So what I want to take you to is the curriculum. And I really want to go into the scope and sequence. And if you notice, they have kindergarten through five. Um, you can also choose the grade level and go straight to the mission that you want or the module. 
I'm just going to pick um, third grade and then I'm going to go into kinder so that TK and kinder can see what they have. So when I go to the third grade, it gives me an overview of all the modules um, or the missions. So SWAN, the teachers, this might be where you want to go. Um, there's a PDF that has um, more information on what um, they're going to learn. But let's say I still need my kids to be doing fractions as numbers. So I'm going to go into the view mission. And it has um, independent digital lesson um, notes and exit tickets. We've downloaded all of these into the Schoology um, resource folder. Um, so those are already there. Um, you'll also notice there's more um, teacher led instruction. Um, there's some extra problem sets or homework if you want. Um, we did not download those, but you could download them and um, add them to your course if you want or add them as an assignment. And then here you see all the different topics um, that are in this module. So let's say I'm when I left school in it feels like forever ago, um, but two weeks ago. We were in module D. So it's going to take me down to module D and I see all of the lessons um, here and how it's set up for the first through fifth grade classes is that you have fluency. Um, the students will always start with fluency and they always start with a number gym. And so if you want to know what the number gym looks like, you would just click right here and you can actually see what they're going to be doing. Um, you have other types of fluency and then you have some sprints also that are like the sprints in Engage New York. So the students do those. This green area, this math chat, and then it looks like a Z squad. This is all guided practice where there is a teacher actually teaching it um, with a video and then the teacher stops and um, the students practice um, as they're going along and it's really guided. And then they have this purple part, which is independent practice. It's called Tower of Power, where the students are going to work independently. But the beauty of this independent practice is if the students get the answer wrong, it really scaffolds for them. So if they continue to get something wrong, it's going to take them back. It may even take them back to some of the guided practice um, and so on. And then there's bonuses that students can do. So that's sort of how um, the curriculum is set up for the first through um, fifth grade. So I'm going to come back up to curriculum. Kindergarten, this is what it looks like for you. And this is where I said TK could use it too. Your missions, um, they are, you cannot do digitally. These are all um, would be worksheets that the teacher would do. So I would actually skip these missions because we're not in a classroom um, to have all those resources. But down here at the bottom, they have digital activities that you can um, assign to your students. And so you can assign them depending on the level of your kids. Um, you have all these different activities that they can do to practice numbers to five or to 10, 15, 20. So even in a kindergarten class, if you know you're knowing your students well enough, you may have some students that you know need to be here. You may have one or two that you know still need to be, you know, numbers to five or numbers to 10. Um, so you can, when you're assigning those assignments, you can pick um, each student exactly where they want, where you want them, or if you want to just assign them all the same thing, um, you can do either one of those. Um, so that is the curriculum. So we'll take questions now um, on that. All right, so um, I'm going to go back up in this uh, chat bar here. Rosie Seamus says her class is already on Zern, and she's wondering if she should create a new class list or if she can use the existing. She can use the existing and just assign and um, just go into the roster and then she can um, either continue where they were at or she can go ahead and assign them um, exactly where she wants them to be. Okay, and um, Denise Brownlee said, once you create a mission starting point, can you select an option for them to be able to continue to learn at their own pace? Yes, they do. Um, and I'll show you some of the reports. Um, they, they can go at their own pace. 
Um, what's nice about this too is the students that are having trouble, it does give them um, some more opportunities to learn it um, with in that independent practice. So it might take some students a little bit longer to get through some of the lessons. Okay, and Diana Douglas says, will it tell students they're not doing grade level work? You know what, that's a great question and I'm not sure. So we'll probably have to play with that. Um, but yeah, we'll mark that question because I'm not sure. And maybe when we, um, I am going to send this PowerPoint to you guys. And so we can look that up and um, get the answer to you in that email that we send to you guys. And um, then April and Kaylee, I'm going to ask you if you guys could write that down because I'll probably forget that question. Okay, I'm just reading through the questions here. Okay. Um, Ingrid Mello says, if I put the linker folder from the district on Schoology, do I still need to put individual lessons or are they already preloaded? For, I'm trying to say that again. If I put the linker folder from the district onto her Schoology class, um, do I still need to put individual lessons or are they already preloaded? I think, and this is where, um, if you haven't done Schoology training, probably do some more and then we can get some answers for you. I know a lot of people are just copying the courses or the files that we have onto their courses. That doesn't necessarily assign them to your students. Um, so if you take the Schoology course or the um, assigning, um, you can assign then, um, and I imagine she's talking about the um, like the worksheets. And then Ingrid, if I'm not answering right, please put something in the chat. Um, those PDFs that we have in the district um, folders, there is a way to assign them. Um, I'm going to talk about it at the very end. I think maybe I'll wait till that because I'm going to talk about something called CAMI too um, and how to use those PDF um, worksheets and how the kids can actually write on them and send them back to you. Um, but everything else, if you want them, the, the online stuff, the kids are going to just go into zern.org um, from there. Okay, and Ellen Brown was asking, how do we communicate the login info for parents? And I'm, it's my assumption that the parents will be getting um, all the communication on that next week. Is that what you're understanding as well, Melissa? I think so. And then through Schoology, and again, we're about four days ahead of you on learning Schoology. So I believe in Schoology, um, you would have to communicate through your to your parents um, through that and and sending out what the login um, information would be. Okay, and Charlene asked with Zern, there's no required due date for assignments and each teacher can look at individual students' progress, correct? Correct, and that's our next se session we're, or section. We're gonna look at all the different reports. All right, and Matt Ford asks, um, is a starting point completely necessary or can we just add specific assignments to them I you could what I've seen so far it looks like you do a starting point point and they keep going you could it's a lot of work though you could say today we're doing this lesson and then you as a teacher though if you wanted to change the lesson for the next day if it's not in sequence you would have to go in and change it into that roster and change the um, curriculum that's assigned to the students so this, I see Zern working more as they're working, you know, continually working in a sequence. If anybody has used Zern before and wants to comment, um, please feel free to do that too. All right, and Diana Douglas says, am I able to create more than one class in Zern since I'm teaching multiple grade levels or um, can I assign different assignments within one class? Um, I would do one class. Um, Zern, I think, will only let you do one class. They've opened it up for free use um, during this time of the coronavirus, um, but they've only, they're limiting it to one class of 35 or up to 35 students. So I would set it up as one class and then differentiate all your students. Okay, um, one more question here. Um, Melissa is asking, um, she set this up um, prior to leaving and sent home the logins. Um, 
She's wondering, um, since not very many students have accessed the platform, is it okay for teachers to record lessons on Schoology and have students watch those tutorials we create to increase chances that they practice? And I'm I, my answer to that would be absolutely. Yes, and this is just a resource. So you do not have to use Zern. Um, we're trying to show you different resources. So Zern is one option you can use. Um, you can go in and you can use Swan. Um, if you have other material, um, you can use it. We also are looking at that distance learning um, folder in Schoology as being um, a community folder. So it's not just the coaches folder, um, but if you have great activities for your that you think would benefit everybody at your grade level, um, you can also post in there. Um, so just to know this is just one option. Great, and I'm just gonna answer two questions real quick. Amy, you asked about Embark and absolutely you can use that resource. Isabel, you asked about assigning SWAN and will it be interactive? And Melissa's gonna show you how to use a program called Cami to make it interactive. Okay, okay. so All I right. think I'm gonna move on. Um, keep your questions coming and um, we'll answer, we'll have more time at the end also to um, talk about it. OK, so my PowerPoint should be loading. And so we are going to now um, talk about the different reports that are available through Zern. So to get to the reports, it's the tab that's right next to that curriculum um, tab. And so you would click on reports and you actually have two different sections of this report. You have something called using reports and class reports. If you click on using reports, it's going to give you um, a page that tells you in depth about every report. So we're talking about reports right now, but you probably won't be using those, these re reports until about two weeks or so from now because your students haven't been working on it. Um, and if you're like me, my learning curve is so high right now, um, I can't even remember what I did this morning. Um, so this is a great resource if in two weeks you're like, OK, I know there's reports, but I don't know what what they were, click on where it says number two, using reports, and it will show you um, all the reports. And it has a video that talks about it. And then once you've watched the video, if you wanna see your students' reports, you would click on view report, and it will take you to your actual students' um, report. If um, in two weeks you remember all of this, and you're like, I don't need to watch a video or anything, You'd click on reports and then you would just go straight here where it says class reports and you can click on whatever report you want. Um, so it's a nice resource um, to have there that you can go either way. First report is would be for TK and K and this is those activities numbers to 5, 10, 15, 20. And it gives you a report showing how far um, your students have been working on that whatever you have assigned to them. So this class, they were assigned numbers to five. You can see who's been working on it. Um, it tells you how many activities they finished and when the last login was. So you so can sort of keep track of um, who's using it, who's not, um, just in case you want to um, touch base with your students if they haven't logged in at all, maybe shooting them an email or talking to them about um, are they having difficulty getting on um, or whatnot. You can also, what's nice about these, you can sort the categories by clicking um, the headings. So if you want to um, have your class listed by their last name alphabetically, um, you just click on that heading. If you want to click on activities finished, you can click on that and you could do it from least to greatest or greatest to least. Um, you could do some sort of incentive, you know, if you did greatest to least and be like, wow, so-and-so has the most activities done, um, try to get your kids excited, um, wanting to do them. Um, so those are different ways that you can do the headings. The next one, um, so that's that report was only for TK and K. That's the only report that you do have. The rest of the reports are for grades one through five. This is a pace report. It shows the pace that the students are on. Um, it has how many lessons per week um, that the students have worked on. 
Zern recommends at least four lessons per week. So if they have done four or more lessons a week, it's going to show up as green. If they've done only two or three lessons, it'll be yellow. And if they've done zero to one lessons, it'll be red or pink. Um, so you can see um, how your students are doing or who's using it. If you notice in that column, May 13th to May 19th, um, you can click on a column and also sort it by um, numerical if you want least to greatest um, and so on. So you can sort of see who's um, using it. This number two shows you what lesson they're on. So you see they're, they are on different pace. Um, it's hard to keep them all on one pace. Um, if you were trying to do one lesson per day, um, you're going to have those kids that just keep going and then you're going to have some of those kids that don't do anything. Um, so this one, so that's why I was saying Zern's more for, they're working more on their pace. Um, kids can earn badges for, um, and that's sort of their incentive to um, do the lesson. And then they also have that bonus. I don't know if you remember in the curriculum at the very end of the lesson, there's bonuses they don't have to do. So you can sort of see who is actually doing the bonuses and who aren't. And then it tells you their last login date um, for your information. And what's nice about this, if you want to know what two lessons um, Joseph did, you can click on the number two and it will pull up a little screen that shows you what lesson he worked on, um, what days, and then what I like is how much time was spent on it. Um, so was it taking him three hours to get through those or was it taking you know, 15 minutes and he didn't do well? Um, just gives you some information. This um, report is called a progress report. You probably won't use this one a lot. Um, it would be if you were using Zern for the whole year and it, you can see the progress they've made throughout the whole year on all the modules. Um, most of you will probably be starting on module five, six or seven depending on um, your pacing guide and what you have left to teach for the rest of the year. Um, so you're probably not really going to use this one, um, but I did want to show it to you. Um, if you do click on a module, it does tell you which lessons they have um, finished. The ones with the stars show um, that if they did a bonus after the lesson. So it doesn't really give you a lot of information, but it's there. This tower alert one, um, you probably are going to use this one. I like I like this one a lot. This tower alert report um, reports on how they did on that independent practice. Um, so what it does is it takes you to the screen and I'm sorry it's blurry. I had to clip it from a video um, because I didn't obviously don't have students and a lot of work in there. Um, but what it does, these are called cards, and each student who um, had a struggle in that independent practice, well, it'll show up. And so I see Jesse, he on lesson, um, module three, lesson two, he struggled during that independent practice. But because the independent practice is set up to give him reteach, he was able then to complete it su successfully on um, that Wednesday. So for me, I'm like, OK, he struggled, but he got it. Um, if I look up above him, I see um, Porter Levy or um, he struggled. And then even with the reteach, he struggled again. So I might need to um, check in with him um, to see how he's doing um, with that. And with this report, I can filter um, my students by um, different time periods. So this has past two weeks. You, I think you can also do it the past week. Um, there's different time periods. So if you wanted to zone in on a certain time period. You can also sort by number of struggles. Um, this one is set at anybody who had any struggle, one struggle or more. I would probably set it at two struggles um, because looking at Jesse, he was able to, he struggled, but then he got it complete. Um, I probably want to know those ones that struggled and then even with reteach struggled again because I'm going to have to um, check in with that student. You can also sort by student. So the ones who have struggles, you can just click on their name and then you can see all the different lessons they struggled on. And you can also struggle or you can also um, filter by content um, on there. 
And one last thing, you can um, filter by hide all the green check marks. So if I had done that, Jesse would not have shown up. So if they had any green check mark, they wouldn't have shown up. Again, you can go on to the Zern website, onto reports, and watch the video on this. Um, it's really informative. And then the last re report is called a sprint report or sprint alert. Sometimes a lesson will have a sprint, not every lesson, but it's going to give you a report on how they're doing with those sprints, which are more like the fact fluency reports. Again, it looks like the other report. It'll have a card and it's I think the sprints are a minute and it's going to show you all the students who got less than 10 correct in that minute. And it tells you the lesson, the sprint, and then what the topic was on. So Jose was having trouble with multiplying by single digit numbers. In round one, he got six right. Round two, he got nine right. He was close to passing, but not quite. Um, if you look up by the arrow um, on the screen, poor Jesse, round one, he got seven, and then he got only five right round two. Um, I probably need to be checking in on him too. Um, to see what's going on and you can always go into that curriculum tab and actually look to see what that sprint was again you can filter by time period you can filter by student um, what they're having trouble with and then you can also do it by content um, rounding you could an example you could click on rounding and it would tell you if it the rounding was with the tens or if it was with the hundreds, so you can get some more information about your students. Okay, questions and answers. I know I know I threw a lot at you. <laughs> All right, so we've got a couple of questions. Um, is there a placement test they can take to place them at a certain mission? No, there's no placement. So that it's going to be the teacher placing them. Okay, and then um, uh, Susan Duff um, said that we have a Zern guru at Orville Wright, and she said that she tells her scholars what level they're on, but otherwise they do not know what grade level um, if the mission is di differentiated. Oh, that's good to know. That's good um, to know. Kim Bloom asked what sixth grade teachers are doing, and I don't know if there's a few more sixth grade teachers on this call, but um, there are resources for Khan Academy and SWAN in the Schoology sixth grade math folder. Um, you can check those out. There's some instructions in there as well. And then um, somebody had asked about new content um, and uh, Mike Henderson sent out a MOU yesterday that stated that we were gonna be introducing new content um, starting week, um, April 13th. Right, and so with the Zern, we did in that distance learning um, resources, we added the SWAN pacing guide and the um, Engage New York pacing guide so you can sort of see where you left off um, before we left school and then what modules and what topics you needed to still teach so you can assign those. All right, I'm just looking to see if there's any more questions here before we go on. Okay. Well, let's go on and then we'll, um, if we've got questions at the end, because we're almost to the end too. And then the next session section might bring more questions. <laughs> so what I wanted to do is, let's see. So I wanna talk about that distance learning resources um, that we have set up in Schoology. So if you go on to that um, and you click on math and then your grade level, there is an Engage New York Zern um, file. We do have the pacing guide in there. We have um, Zern directions. There's videos that take you to the Zern website um, on all the different things that I've gone over today. And then they also, we've also included um, for module five or in Zern, it's called mission five, um, all of the worksheets if you wanted to use them. Um, SWAN teachers are welcome to use it too. And for SWAN teachers, if you're wanting to know what standards are in those modules or missions, um, we've listed them on the folder. And so what's in those folders, um, during that guided practice, there are some um, pages that you can use. Um, they do reference it in the video, but kids could also write it on just a piece of paper if they need to. If they need to. 
Um, and I'll talk about how you can use these PDFs in just a second because we're not expecting parents to print these off. We don't want that um, to happen. And then they also have an exit ticket um, that goes with each of those lessons. For SWAN, we do have, again, go to your grade level, math, um, and there's a SWAN folder. We are currently right now uploading um, SWAN closure, school closure pacing. Um, SWAN has designed um, by week certain lessons um, that the students can do, and they've got links to videos in it also. Um, so check those out. We'll have those up by Friday. Um, we're working on those frantically right now. And also the SWAN pacing guide is in there. So if you wanted to see where you're at, um, Engage New York schools are welcome to go look at that pacing and see if some of the standards that you haven't taught yet, if you wanted to use the SWAN, um, what you would use. We've uploaded in um, this folder um, the units um, from SWAN, all of the lessons, um, basically from the beginning of March until the end of May. Um, anything that was supposed to be taught during that period. Um, if you, you need more stuff added, we can add more. Um, and then SWAN has an online practice, facts practice, that the students can go on. It doesn't record it. It doesn't have a report, but it's just practice that they can go in and practice their math facts. Um, so in this school closure pacing that we're uploading right now, it'll look like this. It'll have in those um, weekly folders, SWAN has designed a um, pacing guide that looks like this for each day of the week. Um, it tells the parents what lessons they could use. Um, where it says English and Spanish, there's links um, to videos. And then SWAN has um, included their re-engage um, material, which is nice because it has a model already done at the top. And then there's um, guide to practice at the bottom. And they also put in extra practice too, that also sort of reviews some of the past stuff they've learned. What I want to talk about is Cami. Cami is a program um, that is uploaded to every um, program or every computer and also the students' computers. Um, it allows you to send a PDF to the student through Cami. They open it up through Cami, and there's going to be training on this next week, and we're going to try to put some more um, screencast on how to do this. So please be patient with us. We're working on it as fast as we can um, to show you how to do this. But what's nice about this, when the students open up these PDFs, they can draw on these PDFs, they can write on them, they can type on them, um, highlight. Um, there's lots of tools. And then there's a turn in button that they click and it sends it back to you and you can see all of their work. Um, so it's an amazing tool. Um, it's just when you go to, again, go to the training, um, there is a video that we have put on our math um, folder that you can sort of look at for right now, but you can in Schoology assign an assignment or a PDF to your student through Cami, and there's just a, one button, you just click one button that says Cami, it sends it to the student, they write on it, they send it back to you. So it's a really neat tool um, to use. So be on the lookout, there's gonna be more trainings next week um, on that. Okay, questions and answers. I'm reading through right now. Yeah, um, <laughs> Um, somebody asked about this one because, and I'm, only, oh, I think April already answered. Um, those SWAN worksheets, we are probably as soon as we get off this webinar, we're going to be frantically trying to get stuff up. Um, we said we'll try to have it done by Friday just because our, our world right now is um, crazy. And so things come up. So um, we're hoping to have them by today or tomorrow. Yeah, absolutely. And just another note, maybe you guys could pass the word around. Um, SWAN is actually releasing those to us the Friday prior to the week to be taught. So we'll be uploading on Friday, so you won't be able to see too far ahead with those, just FYI.
Um, I think I think we've got all the questions answered. If if we did not answer your question, do you want to maybe want to repost in the chat line and and we can address yeah. that? And we can do that. And what I'll do, um, just we can stay on a little bit longer too for those that still have questions. Um, but if you did not at the beginning, um, if you were not able to go onto this website and do your attendance, if you could please do that. And then I'll have Kaylee or April put this in again in the chat room right now. Um, again, this is our sign in sheet. Um, and just to show that you were here, um, you don't have to leave a survey or anything, but it's just a, um, just to say that you were here. <laughs> and then. Um, sorry, Melissa, this is Angela Long. Oh, hi. <laughs> hi, I'm not sure. I think there's somebody else that has a problem. I have the whole time have not been able to chat or see any, uh, I could see the people when I push the chat button. I can see all the people that are attending, um, but I can't do, any, I can't find the attendance sign in or I couldn't participate in any questions or anything. Oh no. Okay, we'll have to find out. Stay online and we'll figure out because okay. you want to see it for other, other okay. um, webinars, yeah. Angela, I'll send you the link um, via email so you oh, have perfect. it and then Hopefully we can uh, get you a copy of this uh, webinar. OK, thanks so much, guys. Great job. Thank you. And we'll stay on the line if you have more um, questions. Um, but I do want to show you our emails. Um, and then if you've taken the Microsoft Teams, um, it's a great platform to ask us questions or ask others questions. Um, and I think next we're working on too of maybe having um, a time where we can be on Microsoft Teams and take questions and answers. So thank you guys for attending today. Um, I know the learning curve is steep, but um, I just need to tell you one thing. My daughter's teacher, it's in a different district. She reached out to her class yesterday and they all got on um, Google chat because they're, they're Google. Um, and my daughter, my 11 year old daughter, it just made her day to have that connection with her teacher and her classmates. So anything we can do to make, um, make our students um, feel as normal as possible in this really a normal time. Thank you. And then April, if you see any other questions, <laughs> they're coming fast. Lots of thank yous coming through. Um, and just wanna say you guys are gonna become more expert at this than we are. So if you get a good tip or you see something that didn't work and you found a workaround, shoot us an email so that as we talk to teachers, we can share that out. We'd really appreciate it because we're all becoming experts at the same time. Yeah, and I see some um, things about sixth grade. Um, go on to the distance learning website, um, the folder. There are some videos and um, explanations on how to get onto Khan Academy. Khan Academy is very easy to set up um, and to same thing like Zern, um, just to get your kids started. Um, I know my daughters use Zern. Um, and it's a great teaching tool. 